What's up, everybody? Thralls Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Neck. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you, and another one that was uh, pretty anticipated, just because we actually saw these guys very recently. Yep. And uh, I heard a couple of singles, like, all right, this should be some nice blasphemous fun. So we are going to go over the latest offering from Pro Fanatica, Crux Simpex. This also comes out on the 22nd of September on Season of Mist's Underground Activists uh, subset. I mean, we'll just say Season of Mist. This band formed in 1990 in Brewster, New York, now in Connecticut. This is their sixth album overall. Granted, it doesn't seem like a lot of albums for being around since 1990, but there are a fuck ton of splits, EPs. Yeah, there's like 35 albums, or at least releases of sorts, on archives. So, you know, these guys haven't laid dormant for, for an incredible period of time. And for those that don't know about this band, uh, it essentially formed as an offshoot when Paul Ledney left Incantation. He actually took other members with him, and they wanted to do something a little bit more black metal adjacent. I've heard this band called just straight up black metal. I would say they're more black and death metal, and I would definitely say that for this release in particular. But, I mean, in general, it's blasphemous, it's droning, it is heavier than hell. Oh my god. And not an ounce of this likes Jesus. Not an ounce. <laughs> this is this is just no. Like if you listen to this, you will never be invited back to your church. Like it makes stuff like Morbid Angel and Incantation look like kids sing along albums in comparison. And when I saw that this was mastered by Arthur Risk, all right, that's one person in the production that I, I was already interested in and right. man. Uh, this might be one of Pro Fanatica's heaviest releases overall. And I would say there's a definite push towards death metal a little bit more than there yeah. has been in the past. Or at least death doom. And yeah, if you've been listening to this band for a while, they pretty much have one particular sound. I've been listening to them for a number of years. I have like Kingdom Come and I got the last one. And by the way, that is Come spelled C-U-M. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they like to reference that a lot. In fact, when we saw them live, there was uh, a mention of blasphemous ejaculate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's it's their thing. That live show was a, a treat. Yeah. Uh, just heavier than hell, evil, and yeah, uh, that is exactly this. And again, uh, with the focus a little bit more on death metal, and I think that really shines in the production mm -hmm, on here, because, mm -hmm. man, these guitars are insanely heavy. Uh, crunchy, gross, sizzled, snarled. I mean, uh, we're, we're talking about like they, they swapped out the guitar strings for intestines or tendons or, or something. Like, it's, it's fucking gross. And they're playing it on a cross, of course, turned upside down. Of course. Why? Because why wouldn't you? But stylistically... Outside of there being like some more death metal tropes, namely again, death doom breakdowns. And those death doom moments are especially prevalent on songs like Compelled by Romans, Wipe the Fucking Face of Jesus, uh, The Third Fall, which there are three falls in here, because I mean, you can't have a third fall without a first and second. Of course not. And the last track, Division of Robes. And when they do a death doom breakdown, it is absolutely crushing and generally involves just single chord chugs yep. single chugs and the the most simplistic of, of drum beats i mean we're talking about just the ride cymbal and a kick and the snare and that's it like i mean once again if you're gonna do something do it right and i mean it doesn't get a whole lot more doomy than that in my opinion honestly this band has always been kind of known for like a minimalist thing like honestly you could break down a lot of their work to tremolo riffs, uh, blast beats, or like galloping blasts. It's almost sort of a static beat. D beats. D beats occasionally, yeah. and uh, you know, some death doom moments, and then like single chord chugs. In fact, the riffing itself is generally just tremolo and single chord moments with like a lot of fucking sustain just to let all that doominess ring out. And you know, with minimal elements they still managed to conjure up like you know some pretty fun like riffs and such on here yeah oh actually wipe the fucking face of jesus the groove riff in there is actually a really beefy chug like that that's a big powerful riff and occasionally they do gravitate a little bit more towards the black metal side like ah man i'm gonna get like in trouble for saying these songs say titles. Sea word of Jerusalem. <laughs> Grunts of Jerusalem. I get in trouble for saying that one because YouTube seems to just watch whenever I say 
you know. Uh, and then uh, Meaning of a Whore, which I don't know if that'll get me in trouble either. Yeah. But uh, those songs have a little bit more of that like, kind of gainy, sort of like mm-hmm. high register tremolo. There's a lot of like deep, low end tremolo. And man, when this band goes to the lower notes, it is savagely heavy, <laughs> especially with the bass tone also being as disgusting as the guitar tone. Something that really stood out to me, and I know they're kind of known for it anyway, but the, the vocals on here were just the deepest, lowest, most blood-curdling, gurgled growls. Like, unholy low. Like in Compelled by Romans, that is a low, low, low gurgle. Just, I mean, unsettling. I mean, this band's unsettling anyway, but man, low gurgled vocals and the atmosphere. Yeah. Ugh. Atmosphere is a big part of this. Like the lead in on Condemned to Unholy Death is just a, a nice little smattering of evil soundscapes. It immediately just sets the mood for this. Yep. And it kind of gives you almost like a jump scare right away when the <laughs> blasts come in. Like, because there's really no like lead up. Like you had this sort of like revved up noise, like it's kind of whirling up and then it just goes. And again, back to the atmosphere. That's, like, more of the mode. Like, I think the whole vibe of this isn't so much about, like, riffs and such. Like, there's definitely some riffs on here. But it's about the unsettling nature and making it sound as evil and as dark and as blasphemous as possible. And I would say at times as heavy as possible because this is just sonically just crushing. It's huge. And despite this being very minimalistic and admittedly kind of repetitive, which has always been kind of an issue with me in terms of this band... Take Up the Cross has, like, some cool, like, change-offs. Like, it mm-hmm. goes into the galloping blast and then switches off to, like, a mid-tempo groove back and forth. And that little shift is kind of cool. And, you know, Paul's variety in terms of vocals, whether they high, more, like, fry, sort of just distorted howls, the low growls. But honestly, it's the guitars here, I think, that really shine. And occasionally they do do some stuff that is just ever so slightly different. The last two tracks... The Third Fall and Division of Robes, in terms of like the riff progression, because it's still a tremolo, because that's what they do, yeah. but the progression itself feels more punk laden. And there are D beat sections on here on, well, uh, the first fall and the second fall. And I was relieved to actually see that those are actually tracks and not just like interludes or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're generally really good ones. In fact, they kind of seem to experiment a little bit more on those with, again, like the D-beat sections and like just some different riffs. And even the second fall and meeting of a horror, albeit, again, they're tremolo riffs, there's still catchy moments in there too. Yeah. Little, little catchy melodies, if you would. I mean, these guys... You know, from Incantation, and Incantation knows how to do, like, those evil apocalyptic rips. Like, this is just that on pretty much steroids, where it is just constantly going and almost always descending down. And yep. that just, again, kind of matches up the mood, because I think their whole thing is to uh, drag you to hell. But, you know, in, in Incantation, it's, uh, that's where you would expect something like this. Like, Melody, at least for these guys, isn't really their shtick so to speak, Um, especially catchy little earworms. Like, it it just kind of threw me off a little bit. Like, oh, I could actually groove out to that. And while the guitars, I think, are, like, definitely multi-track because, man, this, again, has, like, a thickness to it, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of, like, intricate guitar work in terms of, like, layering. Like, occasionally you'll hear some stuff that is, like, a little bit different, but generally not very layered. Like, there's a really cool tapping section, like a dissonant arpeggio. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure what it was. But it was different on uh, Wipe the Fucking Face of Jesus. Man, uh, that is a hell of a song title. <laughs> if we're going to get popped for anything, it's going to be in this review. <laughs> it's that one. I'm it's sure that one, it. 100%. I'm sure our Christian fan base is absolutely loving this, if we have a Christian fan I'm base. I'm sure they are. I'm sure. Not probably anymore. <laughs> As for negatives on here, honestly, for me, it's kind of the same complaint that I do have about Pro Fanatica is it gets hellishly repetitive. Yep. And you know, I like tremolo riffs, I like doomy breakdowns, but when they are done pretty much just on repeat and they are relatively indistinguishable, like even the picking feels yep. about the same on yep. every song, it can get to be a bit much. Now granted, I think with the production here being as nasty and heavy as it is, it has a more ominous sort of like powerful vibe to it. But songs like Grunts of uh, Jerusalem, 
uh, has a super long fade out on this one particular tremolo, and I feel like that fade out goes on forever. And again, this album kind of has like a sort of monotonous feel to it, like not necessarily always in a bad way, but like I don't want to compare it to like shoegaze because that will fucking irk the fuck out of the fans. Sure, sure. But it has kind of that same quality where the drone kind of creates almost like a trance-like sort of state. And it's a very one-track mind, so to speak. Tremolo, D-beat section, tremolo, D-beat section, small D-beat breakdown done. And that's how I could describe nine out of these ten songs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I could describe all ten songs that way. But, I mean, it, it is a minimalist band, and you know, while there's not a lot of flashy play on really any instrument, it's kind of just what they're doing in terms of, like, within this box that they kind of stand yep. in. Like, yep. they generate a lot of just oppressive, dark atmosphere. And uh, surprisingly, the whole album really runs just very smoothly mm -hmm. yep. up until you get to the end. The last track, Division of Robes, is ungodly heavy, much like everything else in this album. It actually has an amazing Death Doom breakdown where it actually continuously gets slower. Yep. And... You're feeling this whole evil well up, like it's just gonna drone out into oblivion. And then um, you hear brightness and angelic choirs. Yeah, with an album this dark and this evil, I did not expect to find light at all. There are chimes, there are horns. Uh, yep. And uh, granted, it sounds epic, and there are some spots I would say are kind of spooky. It feels very. Angelic again. Like, seriously, did they find Jesus at the end of this album? I, I don't know. They called him a grunt, certainly. Yeah. Um, but they did wipe his face. That was, I guess, kind of them. I suppose, he had a little schmutz. Right? A little schmutz. Um, but yeah, like, that really threw me for a loop because I thought for sure they were going to bookend the creepy, horrifying shit that's in the, the first song. Like, I, I thought for sure they were going to do that. But then I was like, this, it feels... Right, like the sun is out, and it's weird because there's a build as this goes out, and so like I kept waiting for a jump scare. I kept waiting for someone to come out and yell at me or something, and like it never did. We were just in the sunshine, sipping a fresca. Yeah, it opens up with Paul shouting, fuck your weak flesh. Right. And then that's how it ends. It's, it's the most jarring moment on this album, and we were both kind of just sitting there scratching our heads on, wait. That's, <laughs> that's how they ended it? Okay. Yeah, this is like a weird ending to a movie. Like, you're like, what? That's that's how the movie ends? That doesn't make any sense. It's like watching like a Friday the 13th movie, and when they knock off his mask, it's Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> it's, yeah, that, that would, you would just lose you right there. It's like, oh, now it's whimsical. Now it's hey. a horror <laughs> comedy. But outside of that, though, honestly, this was pretty decent and yeah. I, I will definitely say I think this is one of their heaviest albums overall like this is just sonically tormenting yep and uh, overall I'm gonna give it three and a half stars I enjoyed it like granted yeah it is monotonous at times and it does hang on and repeat a lot of stuff but honestly it's it's about the mood and about that continuous barrage of just blasphemy and blast beats and tremolos it's kind of just catchy and really mm -hmm. interesting. And while I didn't hold my interest the entire time, there's a lot of killer moments on here. If you're a longtime Pro Fanatica fan, I would definitely say check this out. I do like the slight push more towards death metal on this mm -hmm. one. But uh, yeah, overall, this is just a evil banger. And uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, I pretty much totally agree with everything you just said. Uh, it's a three and a half for me too. It's entertaining, like by the numbers as it is, Yes, that's true, but like the atmosphere and again the vocals and the overall vibe of this album is just creepy and evil. And the switch over to a more death metal theme is obviously something I really enjoy anyway. The end threw me off a little bit, but whatever, it's not my band. <laughs> I, I did enjoy what I heard. I will definitely listen to it again. If you are a longtime fan of this band, I would definitely recommend checking this out. And if you've never heard this band, you're not going to be let back 
near a church anytime soon for the rest of your life. It's probably for the best. Uh, but yeah, honestly, it, it was a real good listen. I had fun. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to prawlsmetal.com. Our store is there. There's also our Patreon link. But we have shirts, we have hats, we have discounted shirts now. They're all available there. So, if you would like one, that is where to go. And we're promoting a couple shows because Lately, that's what we do. Uh, Sunday, September 24th at Howard's Club H in Bowling Green, Ohio, we have Yotuma and Convulsus and somebody else. Somebody dropped off the bill and then they added somebody to the bill. I don't know. I'm really sorry. And then October 1st at Frankie's in our hometown venue uh, here in Toledo, Ohio, Revocation, Unearth, Entheos, and High Command for 25 bucks. Man, come out. That's going to be a banger of a show, especially since Frankie's is a smaller venue. I love seeing awesome bands in small venues. You should definitely come out. If you don't come out, what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? It's Sunday. What What are you going to do? And, of course, thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, thank all you. that shit. Again, it still means the world to us, naturally. I mean, I look for different shit to say at the end of the videos, but uh, it's always the same shit. But I mean it every yep. time. You guys rule... Tons of content coming your way. I, again, I'm, I'm working on a whole bunch of different shit right now. And, uh, yeah, we're going to keep you loaded on all sorts of fun metal stuff. So definitely stay tuned. So one more big thank you because you guys rule. Thank you. And we will catch you later.